Here are some of the stories we have this week. A VA homeless provider receives high recognition. Part two of a VA PTSD program in Tucson is getting a lot of attention. And a look ahead to Veterans Day 2012. That and more on this week's VA News. Did you know that Department of Veterans Affairs provides physical and mental health care for over 8 million veterans? Hi, I'm Natalie Dell. I may be an Olympic medal winner, but I know that real champions are those who have served this country. And VA knows that too. As a VA employee, I've seen the challenges our veterans face. I'm honored to be part of a team that supports veterans in achieving fuller, richer lives, and I invite you to join us in this rewarding experience. If you're a mental health provider, I urge you to visit vacareers.va.gov. Hello, I'm Nick Antonetti with the VA DOD Interagency Program Office. And I'm Sue Wong with the Office of Information and Technology. Thank you for joining us today. Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis and Senator Robert Taft Jr. created the Jefferson Awards for Public Service in Washington 40 years ago. The awards, given at the grassroots and national levels, operate under the singular calling that one person can make a difference. One such person is Cindy Hatch, a social worker with the HUD VASH program for homeless with the South Texas Veterans Healthcare System. WOAI Channel 4 TV in San Antonio, Texas recently awarded Ms. Hatch a Grassroots Jefferson Award for her tireless efforts on behalf of homeless veterans. WOAI granted us permission to re-air its story here. Sometimes the toughest part are the barriers when we're trying to get help for someone and we keep coming against a brick wall. But Cindy Hatch is very good at breaking through those barriers and doing whatever it takes to help the homeless. She's been doing that for years in San Antonio, the last four working with homeless veterans. It's wonderful. You know, the reward is seeing people accomplish what they want. It's very difficult at times, but when it's reached, that's the great reward. I'm not only privileged and fortunate, but blessed that uh, she was assigned to me. Alvino Medellin is a disabled Vietnam-era veteran born and raised in San Antonio. But three years ago, he was living on the streets. And in three years that I've been with her, uh, working together, uh, my life has completely revolved. We worked hard. Cindy Hatch is his caseworker and biggest fan. She works for the HUD-VASH program. That's the Department of Housing and Urban Development's VA Supportive Housing. But it turns out it includes a lot more than just help with housing. First, I was homeless. I had a drug and alcohol uh, problem, lacked education. I was severely ill. But Hatch helped change all of that. So I'm now back in school. I'm, I'm planning on going to college. Uh, I'm taking computer courses. I uh, receive medical attention that I need. Now I have a house or a dwelling that I can call home. I have free established credit and uh, just everything has really just turned around. While Hatch does work out of an office in the medical center, along with more than a dozen other VASH caseworkers, she and the rest are very often out in the community and directly helping their veterans. Each are assigned about three dozen veterans at a time, helping them with everything from counseling and finding work to education, medical, financial issues. And if that doesn't sound like your average government nine to five job. No, it's not. <laughs> We tend to work with the client schedules, and sometimes the veterans, they're working, and um, we go meet them after hours if we need to. But Hatch does even more. She also works with a nonprofit organization here called South Alamo Regional Alliance for the Homeless. That's the problem she's seen grow since she went through Our Lady of the Lake University social work program and interned at a soup kitchen. It's grown, but I also think the help has grown. And I'm thankful now that, like, in my role, I'm able to connect a government agency more with the community agency so we can work together as best we can. She's wonderful, she's dedicated, she's uh, humble. And she clearly loves doing it, seeing how it changes lives, like Albino Medellin. Oh, it's fantastic. He's just worked so hard and um, we've had struggles, you know, a lot of things we've done, uh, working, trying to get him where he wants to be and to see him in good shape is, is really good. And the impact that she's had in my life, and I'm sure the impact she's had in many other veterans' lives, it's indescribable. 
and part of all of us. You know, we send it to Massage and we wish you all the best. Joining us now live is Cindy Hatch and 4 OAI General Manager Jackie Rutledge with the Jefferson Award. That's right. And we want to present you with this Jefferson Award, Cindy, and, and congratulations. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. It's such an honor. Two weeks ago, we ran the first part of a story by KGUN TV9 on your side in Tucson about a program at the VA Medical Center there that helps veterans deal with suicide tendencies and PTSD. It's a popular program drawing veterans from far and wide, many from outside of Arizona. Here's the second part of that story. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I, uh, I tend to joke around a little bit. It's my avoidance, uh, but it has been very, very helpful. Ryan Schumacher pretty much sums it up. He has issues still under the surface, but he's getting the help he needs to avoid becoming a statistic. He breaks it all down Barney style for us. <laughs> That's the way we like it. Ryan is talking about Dr. Nicholas Heineke, the leader of the Southern Arizona VA Healthcare System's residential PTS clinic. Ryan, Eric Kempf, and Richard Watson completed his program, all considered suicide after coming home. We know that suicide is a big issue that, that we're struggling with with some of our returning veterans, um, so that's why VA has really put on a lot more effort at trying to get people in to get treatment a lot, a lot sooner. Dr. David Millity, the chief of the mental health department at the Southern Arizona VA Clinic, shares that concern. Well, um, suicide is a risk, and it's a risk with uh, uh, post-traumatic stress, traumatic brain injury, substance abuse, all increases the risk. It's one of our target populations is trying to prevent uh, completely suicide. As for the Pentagon report that showed more veterans have died this year due to suicide than in combat, those numbers don't seem to translate here in Arizona. The rate is uh, a little hard to determine. We here in uh, our area in Tucson, we only have maybe five to six suicides per year usually. And uh, we haven't really seen an increase in the returning soldiers. It's still a spread between the younger returning soldiers and uh, Vietnam era uh, uh, veterans. The doctor also thinks they're able to meet current demand for mental health services. They see about 10,000 veterans a year, but he admits despite having three clinics in the Tucson area and five in rural areas, not everyone knows about them. That's one of our challenges is making to get the word out. And that's why I'm glad you're doing this because uh, if they don't know about us or hear about us, we can't help them. Congress recognizing what should be considered a crisis among our veterans is stepping up too. Congress just approved 1,900 new positions nationally for mental health for the returning veterans. Uh, 1,600 were clinical. Uh, we out of that number got six new positions that we're just currently recruiting for. And in a recruitment effort of their own, Eric, Ryan, and Richard all want their fellow troops to step up, admit when they need help, and seek out the VA's PTSD program. It saved their lives, and they feel it could save someone else's too. Preparations for Veterans Day 2012 are underway here in Washington and across the nation. It's always a special time at VA where we seek to highlight our mission of service to our heroes, to bring more into the fold to great to get the services and benefits they earned. We wanted to bring a few things to your attention before November 11th. The public broadcasting system is airing a new special on veterans, hosted by popular actors and veterans advocates Gary Sinise and Joe Montaigne. Here they are to tell you about it. Greetings from the capital of the United States. On Sunday, November 11th, Please join us for the premiere of the National Salute to Veterans as we honor our military veterans and their families. On the show, we'll pay tribute to all veterans, those fresh from the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, to those still among us from World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, and to all those who have died for our freedom throughout our nation's history. The National Salute to Veterans will include the best of the best from past National Memorial Day concerts and offer reflections on the meaning of the Veterans Day holiday. Join me, Joe Montaigne, and me, Gary Sinise, as we mark the beginning of a new American tradition, the National Salute to Veterans. Thank you. This is the 2012 Veterans Day poster, which you can download from the VA webpage on the screen. 
Also available for Veterans Day is a gallery of all the past Veterans Day posters. The 2012 Teacher's Guide, the History of Veterans, Veterans Day Speakers, and Volunteering at VA. You can also get a copy of the Presidential Proclamation and see which Veterans Day observances may be going on in your area and at VA National Cemeteries. And there are lots of photos of Veterans Day's past and frequently asked questions that may help you. If you have other questions, email them to vetsday at va.gov. A new edition of VA's Emmy Award-winning video news magazine, The American Veteran, is available for viewing. Here is host Jonathan Kopanger to tell us about the stories in the show. Thanks. We're at Fort McHenry, where we have a number of interesting stories to share with you this month. We'll show you how a sailor is using the GI Bill to study music. Then we'll learn about VA's online health record. And we'll go behind the scenes at the VA's Crisis Hotline Call Center. Those stories and more coming up next on The American Veteran. Back to you in the studio. Thank you. The American Veteran can be found on the VA homepage. Just click on Media Room, then Video. You can also watch it on VA's Knowledge Network, the Content Distribution Network, and the Pentagon Channel. Did you know? The push to provide care near to where veterans live has been going on for several years, but not at the current frenetic pace. In the past two decades, the number of VA outpatient clinics has increased from about 200 to more than 1,000. This year, 15 new outpatient clinics have been opened or will be soon. The most recent clinic opening was in Carrollton, Georgia, the Trinka Davis Veterans Village. The new 25,000 square foot outpatient clinic and community living center will include basic primary care, home-based primary care, mental health services, physical and occupational therapy, and much more. VA Undersecretary for Health Dr. Robert Petzl said it was the most magnificent community-based outpatient clinic he has ever been associated with, and he's opened a lot of them. That's all for this week's show. I'm Nick Antonetti. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm Sue Wong. In next week's show, we'll have more of this footage from the recent National Veterans Creative Arts Festival in Boston, where veterans who were winners at a VA facility exhibited their craftsmanship and showmanship on a national stage. Have a great day and rest of the week.